Aloha everybody, my name is James D. Kimmel and I'm here as an ambassador of the Prince of Peace of our world who is also the sovereign co-creator of our local universe, Michael of Nebadon, who bestowed himself on this world and incarnated as our older human brother, Jesus of Nazareth, some 2,000 years ago. One of the last things a scientist usually does after making some significant discovery is to publish a paper on the subject in some relative scientific journal. But there is no relative professional journal in which to publish the good news inherent in the unified field equation which introduces man to God and God to man. Therefore, I have finally decided to complete this last step in my life relative to the revelatory derivation of the unified field equation in February 1969 which resulted in my personal spiritual transformation and a paradigm shift in my consciousness. This, therefore, is a public announcement, a report for the general public, and a proclamation for all the governments and nations of the world to contemplate. The long sought after unified field equation of the unified field theory of relativity was finalized in my presence as a matter of revelatory fact and truth in late February 1969 at my residence in Pembroke, California. Albert Einstein spent the last 17 years of his life attempting to derive this equation, which he once said, if ever derived, would explain the existence of everything, everywhere, to everyone, forevermore. That's a tall order for any equation, but he died trying. The actualization of the unified field equation is most unusual because it was a direct revelation from God to man. It was not a matter of resolution out of a continuum of facts, nor was it the supposed genius of our intellects. We didn't know this or understand that at the time of the revelation, and it took me reading the Arantia book for over 40 years to begin to really understand just what all went down on that fateful day. Apparently, for some purpose, we were chosen by the Prince of Peace and Sovereign Creator of our universe to receive this incredible revelation from God because we were honestly and sincerely seeking the answer that one equals infinity, symbolizing the fundamental truth and fact of all creation, the absolute sovereignty of the will of an infinite, personal, absolute, and eternal God. Brother Einstein made the mistake of concluding that there could be no such thing as an absolute singularity, in spite of the fact that we are each endowed with two. The mortal personality is one absolute singularity, and the other is one quantum unit of the will of God, the thought adjuster, in the souls of men. For this and probably other reasons, God did not choose to reveal the unified field equation to the man who coined its name. But he did reveal it to me, through another person, a friend, as a direct revelation from the Prince of Peace through his Spirit of Truth relative to the will of God. Now I was a hardcore atheist at the time of this revelation, and the last thing in the world I was expecting to discover as an atheistic scientist was God. But I was honest and sincere underneath it all, having a supreme love for truth as a person. So I instantly stopped being an atheist and, once again, began not only just to believe in God, but actually to know Him. I had found Him. I met God within myself, and I now know Him as never before. Without realizing it, I had been progressively enlightened by all the knowledge I had acquired and the truth that had been revealed to me as a scientist in pursuit of truth and happiness. What I didn't know as a scientist was that God is truth, and that is an absolute fact, even the absolute of all truth. God is spirit, and truth is the consciousness of God relative to any subject of thought or discussion. I didn't know I had the spirit of truth and the will of God within my own mind. Truth is a revelation of the spirit of the Prince of Peace, the spirit of truth, to the mind of the fact-seeking scientist, as it is for all who seek the truth of unanswered questions and answers. 
There are just three elements in universal reality, fact, idea, and relation. The religious consciousness identifies these realities as science, philosophy, and truth. Philosophy would be inclined to view these activities as reason, wisdom, and faith. Physical reality, intellectual reality, and spiritual reality. We are in the habit of designating these realities as thing, meaning, and value. The progressive comprehension of reality is the equivalent of approaching God. The finding of God, the consciousness of identity with reality, is the equivalent of the experiencing of self-completion, self-entirety, self-totality. The experiencing of total reality is the full realization of God, the finality of the God-knowing experience. The full summation of human life is the knowledge that man is educated by fact, ennobled by wisdom, and saved, justified by religious faith. Physical certainty consists in the logic of science, moral certainty in the wisdom of philosophy, spiritual certainty in the truth of genuine religious experience. This is from the Urantia book, page 2094. Facts deal with things, ideas with meanings, and values with truth, reality. Truth is a revelation of the consciousness of our sovereign creator father, our older human brother, Jesus of Nazareth, the Prince of Peace, on any subject. So here is my story. <laughs> in February 1969, I was engaged in writing a research paper on the experiences as a teacher of some 165 high school students in Nevada, California, hopefully to be published in some reputable scientific or educational professional journal or magazine, like Science or Scientific American. I didn't know it, but I and my students were treading on the very threshold of concluding the unified field equation as a group effort. But on November 15, 1969, my high school teaching career was brought to an inglorious end when I was arrested on campus for suspicion of possession of marijuana. <laughs> and it was all a setup to get me fired from my employment as a teacher. When I first started teaching high school in the fall of 1967, I knew nothing whatsoever about the use of marijuana. Within the first six months, my students had informed me of more about pot than I had learned as a botany major at Ohio State in the 1950s. So by the time the new school year of 1968 started, I had allowed myself to get educated through first-hand personal experience with pot and came to the conclusion that if I could figure out how to share the essence of everything I knew to be true and factual with my students, we could all get on the same page of understanding and sense in common, that is, common sense. This led to a new way of teaching in all five of my classes. I wanted to take the pressures of high school life off the minds of my students, so I told them that our classes were all going to be about questions, answers, and discussion. I didn't know it then, but the law of the universe is, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find. And we were about to begin to ask and answer our way from where we all were to where we all came from, along with everything else in the universe. There was to be no homework, no textbook, and no worry about grades. Everyone was going to get an A. All they had to do was participate in the ride we were about to take with our questions and answers. So as soon as we got settled into the first day of classes, I asked this question. Is everybody here? And someone said, yeah, we're all here. And I asked, which is where? And someone said, room 13, Nevada High School. And I asked, which is where? And someone said, Nevada, California. And I asked, which is where? And someone said, the United States of America. And I asked, which is where? And someone said, North America. And I asked, which is where? 
and someone said the northern hemisphere of the world. And I asked which is where, and someone said on the planet, Earth. And I asked which is where, and someone said in our solar system. And I asked which is where, and someone said the Milky Way galaxy. And I asked which is where, and someone said the universe. And I asked which is where, and someone said everywhere. And I asked, is it infinite? And someone said, yes, it certainly appears to be so from here. Then I asked, what is the infinite universe made of? What makes up the vast universe? And my students gave me words revealing what the universe consisted of from their perspective until words filled all the blackboards. So then I asked, what are the things that make up the universe made of? An analysis of all the words on the blackboards revealed five major dimensions of relative realities consisting of physical reality, things, mindal reality, meanings, spiritual reality, values, personality reality, that is, creative free will, thought, free will choice, and souls in the wombs of our minds, which took us deeper and deeper into an analysis of the three different energies of matter, mind, spirit, and the volitional power of free will choice associated with creative personality and thought, as they all relate to the infinite potentials of qualified, universal, and unqualified realities. Somewhere along the way, I introduced my students to the relativity concepts of special, general, and unified field theory that Dr. Einstein was so famous for. So by the time my last day of teaching came, concomitant with my arrest for marijuana on the school campus on November 15, 1968, we had spent about a week discussing the unified field theory and contemplating the theoretical equation thereof in all my classes. From this time until late February 1969, I got myself reorganized and began to finalize my thoughts on paper about the unified field theory. I was unaware at the time that Einstein had opined that someone should try an algebraic approach to the solution of the unified field equation, and it just so happened that I had taught two classes of algebra during my first year of teaching at Novato High School. Then, one day in early March, I got a visit from a new friend I had recently met at a local rock concert who was employed by IBM as a research mathematician in their Bay Area research facility. So we fired up a joint for the occasion, and I showed him all my work, indicating where I was having difficulty visualizing what the unification of three infinite fields of potential reality revealed and portrayed by the standard algebraic number line in figure one and the Einsteinian number line shown in figure two would look like, theoretically, before they were qualified. I knew from experiences at the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory in Berkeley that the unified proton or neutron consisted of numerous subatomic particles of positive, neutral, and negatively charged energies. Finally, after perusing my research and symbolism of the number line, he paused thoughtfully and said, God, at the same time writing down one equals infinity. This rang my truth bell so loudly I exclaimed, holy shit, there is a God. And I instantly went from being a hardcore atheist to an exultant theist, a believer and knower in God through revelation personal experience, and faith in myself. This was the epiphany of my adult life, bringing me full circle back to God within myself, but on the highest levels of science, philosophy, and truth, as a theist, one who knew God from personal experience, for which there is no cosmic substitute. Naturally, all this completely blew my mind, and I was face to face with the fact and truth of God. 
My mind was undergoing all kinds of changes, like a slot machine in Vegas paying off in my mind, and I awoke to the realization of the greatest of all possible scientific discoveries a scientist could make, God. And it all came from God revealing himself, the one who knew, who actually is the answer. <laughs> The unified field equation, 1 equals infinity. The equation symbolizes God, especially the absolute singularity of his inherent and infinite self-will. 109 years ago, in 1905, the man who coined the name for the unified field theory of relativity, Albert Einstein, derived the mass equivalence equation, E equals mc squared concluding that all of the various manifestations of physical energy in the universe are uniquely different versions of one thing at base level, the pure light of physical energy matter. The theories of relativity aver that everything is relative, and what everything in infinity is relative to is its absolute source. There is an infinite cause for every infinite effect in infinity, except the one and only uncaused cause, the infinite will of the infinite and eternal God. It takes an infinite and eternal cause to produce an infinite and eternal effect. And the first source and center, the personality of our Father, the Universal Father, actually is infinite and eternal. Einstein averred that the unified field equation, if ever derived, would explain the origin and existence of everything, everywhere, to everyone forevermore. And it does. The unified field equation symbolizes the infinite will of the infinite person, God. And therefore, it literally means simply that everything, everywhere in infinity is a manifestation of one thing, the universal and eternal outworking of the infinite and absolute will of God directly or indirectly. Deriving the unified field equation unifies the frontiers of science, philosophy, and truth, man and God, together, and turns out to have been a direct revelation from God himself, through the revelation of the spirit of the Prince of Peace, the spirit of truth, that further set me up to discover the greatest book ever published on earth, in my estimation, the fifth ethical revelation of God to man, the Urantia book. This book is the cosmology of the unified field equation of infinite reality. Take a good look, folks. <laughs> the political and military application of Einstein's mass equivalence equation, E equals mc squared, introduced man to the atomic age and brought on all the terrifying potentials of great mass destruction for the human race. The personal, social, moral, economic, and political application of our equation, the unified field equation, 1 equals infinity, to society, introduces man to God as a fundamental scientific fact and truth of our present spiritual age, even the post-bestowal sun age of God as revealed in the Arantia book. I have studied this book seriously for the past 45 years of my life because, in my estimation, it is a divine cosmology of the unified field of universal unity, one equals infinity, of which we are all an intimate personal part of the infinite whole. This book is the greatest gift from God since Jesus himself, and it will equip you to make the most of yourself for the benefit of yourself and your neighbors as yourself by application of the will of God to yourself and your neighbors as yourself. <laughs> Given all the facts of life makes it easier to understand everything and love everybody. This book is far greater in educational value than five years of study spent in any of the best universities on earth. So you can stay home for free and enjoy the pleasure of learning for the rest of your life, to the max. <laughs>
the greatest physical manifestation of the truth of the fact of E equals MC squared was revealed by the explosion of the first atomic bomb test, codenamed Trinity, near Alamogordo, New Mexico. Manhattan Project Director J. Robert Oppenheimer described it as a light brighter than 10,000 suns. But the next two atomic bombs revealed the death and destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. Since then, over 2,000 nuclear and thermonuclear devices have been detonated on Earth, producing global fallout that has penetrated the food chain of the entire ecosystem of the world, integrating a plethora of radioactive materials in the biosphere that has led to cancer becoming, progressively, one of the greatest threats to life in today's world. And this says nothing of the Fukushima reactor disaster that has injected more radioactive matter into the global food chain environment than all the atmospheric tests so far combined. One may ask, in retrospect, what has been the personal, social, moral, economic, military, and political value of the consequences of the birth and maturation of the atomic age which originated with Brother Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. On the other hand, it will be of much greater value to contemplate the application of the unified field equation, 1 equals infinity, to the personal, social, moral, economic, and political arenas of life on earth. As a son or daughter of God, eternal life is a gift from God based on your faith. As your parents' egg and sperm fuse to produce your physical body, your personality is destined to fuse with the spirit of the will of God within your soul, which is your passport to eternity and passage to paradise. <laughs> Absolute proof of the unified field equation would be manifest by the fusion of the spirit of the will of God with the soul of someone while still living the life in the flesh as a mortal son of God. The human being would be carried aloft by a midwayer and the physical body would totally disappear in the consuming flash of flames and light as in a chariot of fire. By this report, science is now confirming the greatest of all scientific facts, the truth that there is a God and he is your, our spiritual father. The ultimate value to be derived from the personal, social, moral, economic, and political application of the unified field equation, one equals infinity, to your life will lead ultimately to world peace under a new form of global government of the people, by the people, and for the people and the nations of the world, even the political sovereignty of representative mankind government. It is imperative that you choose to align, realign, and attune your will to the will of God that resides within your mind and soul if you want things to become increasingly better and better and best in your life, all as a matter and consequence of positive free will choice. You're already relatively perfect, and you can become increasingly perfect every day, choice by choice. So do you want world peace? Then pray for it and do work toward it. The political sovereignty of representative mankind government will bring lasting peace on earth and the spiritual brotherhood of man will forever ensure goodwill among all men. And there is no other way whereby peace on earth and goodwill among men can be realized. So says Jesus in the Urmia Lectures on Sovereignty pages 1485 to 1491 in the Orangible. Everyone of the age of moral choice has the will of God and the spirit of truth within their own mind and soul. The will of God, the gift of God, is like a drop of an infinite ocean of living love and water within your own mind and soul. It is the father of your soul, even as you are the mother, and as a personality, you can freely choose to dive right in, head first, to the very center of this drop of the infinite ocean of love and the water of life within your own mind and soul. And if it is your will to do the will of the infinite God within your mind, 
you will become increasingly perfect from this day forward on this world and on to the next and the next and the next world ad infinitum all the way to the geographic center of infinity <laughs> paradise the actual dwelling place of the eternal gods and the place of our personality origin all this because you are a son or daughter of the god of free will thought and love and through faith you can actually realize and daily experience this ennobling truth this is what each person in the world needs most to know if you want personal social moral economic and political peace that is world peace in our lifetimes it is our basic cosmic identity as sons and daughters of God we have inherent and intrinsic rights and value and because we are of infinite value to God we can all be of supreme that is maximum finite possible value to each other as spiritually unified persons and as spiritually unified nations there has yet to appear on earth a government or a church that is good enough for everyone and all nations for such a government as the planetary sovereignty of representative mankind government to become existent and implemented in today's world requires the organization and function of a global constitutional convention for the purpose of creating a master charter of liberty constitution of world law that would secure the rights and power of the people of the world thereby enabling the creation and implementation of a new form of world government of the people by the people and for the people and the nations of the world under the sovereignty of god <laughs> The personal application of the unified field equation to your life will be the progressive evolution of yourself, your soul, toward that moment of existence when you actually fuse with your indwelling thought adjuster on this world or the next. The thought adjuster is a pre-personal fragment of deity, kind of like a spiritual sperm of the universal father which actually is the nature and character of the infinite one fusing with the will of god makes it possible for us to personalize his will forever <laughs> personal religion is the inevitable outgrowth of the application of the will of god to your life true religion is personal and is based on your own personal relationship with god within yourself you don't have to die or go to church to find God or go to heaven. Heaven is everywhere God is, and God is within you. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is within us, and we need only to bring him to life in our lives to externalize and socialize the kingdom of heaven on earth. Everything you need to experience the living of your life on every world from here to paradise is within you right now and will unfold as the outworking of the will of God in your personal life forever. We can bring an end to the hopelessness and helplessness attending the blight of economic inequality and homelessness by establishing a new form of economic freedom based on economic equality. As sons and daughters of God, we have political freedom based on political equality, spiritual freedom based on spiritual equality, and we can create economic freedom based on economic equality by creating a new form of government good enough for each of us and all nations. We need to create the planetary sovereignty of representative mankind government whose enlightened legislators could then pass the legislation that would not only secure the rights and powers of the people of the world, it could create economic freedom based on economic equality, based on the fact this new form of government could economically enable every citizen of every nation on earth to become free, politically, spiritually, and economically, by providing the equivalent of, say, one half million dollars U.S. as a once-in-a-lifetime repayable endowment loan for each and every person in every nation on earth. The planetary sovereignty of representative mankind government could create a new global economic system 
for the benefit of all the nations and all the people of those nations, wherein economic freedom based on economic equality could be legislated into existence. The enlightened legislative bodies of each nation could decide the amount to award each of their nationals and the government of all mankind, the central bank of the spiritual brotherhood of all humankind, could match that amount for the nationals of each nation to ensure economic freedom based on economic equality for everyone in every nation on Urantia. Collective security will never afford peace until the collectivity includes all mankind. When everyone in every nation of the world is educated, enlightened, and ennobled by their realization of the worldwide spiritual brotherhood of all humankind, based on their personal faith recognition of the fatherhood of God, they will become supremely free and secure. At this point in time, everyone would have a budget to work from and be able to get all the education and experience needed by each person to get the most out of oneself for the benefit of all and the glory of God. With a new global economic system under the truly wise leadership of a spiritually transformed brotherhood of economic expertise, the people's economic freedom could be maintained easily forever. Nobody would ever have to go to bed hungry again, and everyone would have a place to sleep. The political, spiritual, and economic unification of the people and nations of the world, under the planetary sovereignty of representative mankind government, would be the outworking of the will of man in partnership with the will of God for the spiritual purpose of the Prince of Peace in relation to the will of God, our Father, and the benefit of all humankind. The worldwide realization of the fatherhood of God and the spiritual brotherhood of men will mark the beginning of the spiritual transformation of present-day humanity. Slowly, things will become increasingly as they ought to be, pursuant to the will of God and the law of our universe. The golden rule, the law of the kingdom of heaven, will engender fairness and social peace throughout society even as the loving service of one another and our needs will bring personal, social, moral, economic, and political peace and happiness to our planet, Urantia. So it is my supreme pleasure and honor to be able to proclaim to you, brothers and sisters, the kingdom of God is at hand, <laughs> meaning a return to the high spiritual concept of Jesus who proclaimed that the kingdom is the will of his heavenly Father, dominant and transcendent in the heart of the believer. That which the world needs most to know is, men are the sons of God, and through faith they can actually realize and daily experience this ennobling truth. The outworking of the will of God for our world is underway relative to his answer to the prayer of the Queen of Hawaii. Lily Uokalani, for the reinstatement of her government, as requested in her official protest of the United States government on June 17, 1897, where she says, And to the Almighty Ruler of the universe, to him who judgeth righteously, I commit my cause. This action by the Queen of Hawaii preserved the sovereignty of the lawful Hawaiian government in exile and placed her case in the jurisdiction of the Supreme Judge of the world, the sovereign creator of our universe. The United States Congress and President of the United States have passed a joint resolution of Congress in 1993, 100 years after the overthrow, Public Law 103-150, thereby enabling the indigenous Hawaiian people, the Kanaka Maoli, to reinstate the exiled sovereignty of the Kingdom of Hawaii as of March 13, 1999. Since then, the lawful Hawaiian government has conducted three elections and has convened 39 legislative sessions of the Manukau Kanawai, the legislature of their government, 
in relation to its progressive reinstatement. It is my belief at this point in time that the long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object of Zionist global dominion under a new world order, will bring itself to judgment before they will ever be able to attain their goal of global dominion insofar as their will is inconsistent with the will of God and contrary to the law of the universe. There is no such thing as a chosen people. The Zionist scaffolding of the United Nations organization is itself a Zio-Soviet political instrumentality that reduces all members to a permanent position of political inequality and slavery under their total over-control in the negative Ziotopia of the New World Order. I am 79 years old now, and it has been 45 years since God revealed the unified field equation to me. Not long after that, in March 1969, the Arantia book was revealed to me for the first time. At that time, I had just gone from being an atheist to being one who even mistakenly believed for a few months that he was God. I just couldn't imagine how I could possibly understand everything unless somehow I must be God. <laughs> no doubt about it. The truth will set you free of all such illusions as I was soon to discover about thought changers, thought adjusters, and thought controllers. <laughs> And finally, I would like to dedicate this report to my older sister, my five beautiful children and their precious families, and to their mother, my ex-wife, Cordy. I pray for your forgiveness for my failure to be a better husband and faithful friend. Her loss is proof of my greatest failure as a man. I can't change the past, but I sure can help change the future for myself and my brethren as myself. My dearest Cordy, I love you now more than I have ever loved anybody, and I pray for our happy reunion on the eternal side of time and space. <laughs> this report is my concluding work as a scientist and Hawaiian national. I can only imagine that it is the will of God for me to proclaim and publish the truth of this reality to the world to end the atomic age and inaugurate a new spiritual age of peace for the personal, social, moral, economic, and political benefit of all, and the glory of God forever. Aloha.